Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to be continuing to work on shaping the metal. Today I'm going to be uh, trying out something new again and uh, this time around I'm going to be trying to cut a bob nose into the front of the slide. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Rogers Precision or Chuck Rogers. Um, he's kind of been an inspiration to me and uh, I'm going to try and do what he does in his pistols, uh, which is Bob knows the front of the slide. The only way you can do that is if you're using the EGW monogrammed bushing and spring plug because they are indexed. Essentially, what I used is a, a piece of a chopstick I had laying around. You can see I kind of jammed it um, into the spring plug and then against the breech face, basically so that the spring plug doesn't move right and I only have the bushing and the spring plug in the slide at this time so the idea here is to is to basically cut the uh, spring plug at an angle uh, leading up to the bushing and then also relieve the uh, very bottom of the of the uh, slide spring plug tunnel also at an angle following the new angle of the spring plug and that will create that bob nose uh, effect basically so <clears throat> I've measured my spring plug depth to make sure that I'm not going to cut into it when I file it down and I definitely will not what I'm going to need to do right now let me zoom you in a little bit what I need to do right now is mark where my slide is going to be and I'll mark it by the same kind of length as the as the height of the spring plug that's protruding out of the out of the slide so that's going to be my stop point here and then also I'll mark where my where my bushing feet stop so around there and around there because what I don't want to do is is bring up my angle all the way up to where the bushing will look like it's it's just hanging off the slide so <clears throat> and now I'm just gonna start filing down the spring plug uh, to an angle leading basically to about this point right here on the bushing so clean up my filing a little bit, also round the top. That's the shape of our uh, spring plug now. I didn't cross the line where the feet touch the slide so <clears throat> what I can see here is that I can simulate rounding if I just stay on the edges here so that's what I'm probably gonna do
Now you can see what that looks like. So I'm also going to start sanding down a little bit the face of the plug. And now we just need to chamfer everything. I'm also going to deburr my opening here using a scraper. Now we're going to start rounding since we're going to be dehorning this whole section. Now I'm going to use some sandpaper. The other thing I'm going to need to do is chamfer the uh, spring plug and restore the chamfer on the bushing. Alright, so we got a little chamfer going on both sides. I think it looks pretty good. And it appears to be pretty even. So that's good. Now we're going to chamfer the back.
Alright, so at this point we're going to need to cut back the dust cover. What I'm going to do is use a marker first to figure out where my dust cover should be. So this is where the slide um, spring plug tunnel ends and now we're going to line up our slide and frame on the rear which I've already blended, I think I mentioned that before. I wouldn't have been doing this before I blended it. And now I'm going to check where my where my uh, scallop on the slide stops and it's about here. So I think I think this is how far we're going to take the frame in by All right, so now let's check what we have here. We're going to position the slide level with the frame. And this is what we have. So the dust cover has been cut back. We're not showing the end of the slide, which is great. And now I'll be dehorning the frame. All right, so I've decided to show you uh, how I blended all the edges on the frame. You saw that I got a, a few strips of uh, leather to shim up my beaver tail, make sure that it's basically pressed out as I'm, as I'm working on the upper edges of the frame and beaver tail. I'm trying to uh, work on them together just to make sure that it's one continuous chamfer, basically. Um, I'm going to touch pretty much all the external parts uh, in to some degree. Uh, right now, you saw I took out those leather shims and uh, now I'm working on the bottom edge. And you see I'm using a Dremel here, so I'm kind of cheating. I'm trying to get as much uh, chamfering done as possible very quickly, um, just because it's getting kind of late. And uh, what I wanted to mention and what I didn't include in this video is that after I've done all of this work by Dremel, I'm actually going to go through and clean up all the edges by hand using sandpaper because using a Dremel, and, and the reason why I don't prefer using a Dremel is because if you stop in one spot for just a second longer than everywhere else, uh, you'll get a divot basically or a wave that will be created because the Dremel will continue cutting just in that one spot. So while it's very important to continue moving, uh, obviously I'm not a machine and I can't uh, I can't keep my feed speed, if you want to call it that, um, consistent. So um, I think it's very important to follow up the Dremel work by hand and make sure that the surfaces are ni nice and smooth. So decided not to include it, but it will be done. In any case, next video is going to be on sandblasting and then finally parkerizing all these parts. Thank you for watching.